Okay, so 11.10 says that now um, instead of putting the axis of rotation through, uh, sorry, through the center over there, the midpoint, let's put the axis of rotation on one side, one side. And let's calculate the um, the rotational inertia. Okay, so calculate the rotational inertia of the rod in example 11.9 about an axis perpendicular to the long axis, perpendicular to the rod, and passing through one end. Okay, so let's see if we can if we know what's going on here. So there's the rod, and there is our axis of rotation. So previously it was in the center. So we know that the inertia, rotational inertia, is r squared dm, r squared dm, and we know that dm is lambda dx, and this is uniform, which means the inertia is evenly distributed. So our lambda, so we we plug this guy in there, and we get lambda integral of r squared dx. Okay, so this means now, uh, and actually this r squared is an x because we, this is our x axis, so we integral of x squared dx. Okay, and so our dx is a little differential x over there. Before we were looking at differential a dm, and we were saying we want to add up that dm's uh, rotational inertia plus the next dm plus the next dm etc okay so we know that this is equal to m over l from the previous one that lambda is m over l but now what are what are our integration limits if this is x equals zero and our x is increasing and this is x equals l right that's the total length so it's going to go from zero Remember, we're adding up all these differential elements. That one, plus that one, plus that one, plus that one, plus that one. But we're moving from left to right. So this is where x equals 0, and that's where x equals L. And we have x squared dx. Okay, so we've got m over L. If we integrate this, we get x cubed over 3 between L and 0. So we're going to get m over l, substitute l in there, we're going to get l cubed over 3, minus m over l, substitute 0 in there, we're going to get a 0. So the answer is m l squared over 3. So that is the inertia of this specific case. Now, when it was, when the rotation was about there, uh, the i was 1 over 12 ml squared. When the, so that's over there. And when we had it over there, the rotational inertia was ml squared over 3. Now let's, let's look at this critically. Can you see that the rotational inertia, um, the rotational inertia, I think I, I keep forgetting to put an omega there. The rotational inertia for, for the one over here, Let's, let's, uh, let's look at it this way. What is easier to rotate? If you were rotating it if about this point or rotating it about this point? Well, we know it would be easier to rotate about that point. Just take a ruler or a long rod and rotate it about the midpoint and then rotate it about the end and ask which is easier. Well, we know that this would be easier because its rotational inertia is 1 twelfth ml squared, whereas the rotational inertia over there is 1 1 third. So this rotational inertia is uh, 4 times, is that right? Is my math right? 1 over 3, uh, yeah, I think so. I'm sorry if I made a mistake. But, as you can see, this guy is larger than this guy. So its rotational inertia is larger. It's more difficult to rotate 
the object when you're rotating it about this axis than about that axis.